together again i'm actually really excited about this week because we're going to talk about the comic it's great and uh this was asked for by gay dave um i met gay dave up in norwich and he has asked us to go through the comic as a walkthrough today and um, i have to say he introduced himself to me as gay dave because his friend is also called dave but is not so gay dave um, and I think Dave actually asked this week if he was the only gay in the village, to which I said, yeah, there can only be one. However, that's not true. Dave, I'm sorry to disappoint you. There's plenty of other gays in this village. Um, so moving on, uh, we're going to just talk through uh, the comic book. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Let's just do that. I'm so excited. It's just like no one ever asks and I'm just ha so happy. I'm so happy. Okay, so I've got it all queued up here. So I'll just move on to here. Okay. So, uh, where do we start? Oh yes, so at the beginning, this is uh, the comic. It's, it's drawn by Nigel Dobbin. It's, um, the story has been pulled out of my head by Hilary Robinson and put down on a comic script uh, page. I might release that at some point. Maybe I'll release it as part of the second album, Crowdfunder, something like that. And then, then Nigel drew it. And um, I won't go through the actual story parts that are in front of this because you can read it. I've put a link in the show notes telling you where you can actually read the full comic if you want to. Or it's purchasable from the website www.deathandgloria.com uh, forward slash shop. Also a link in the show notes. Uh, Anywho, so Nigel Space. The space backgrounds here is something that Nigel has used on previous comics. Um, it's like his stock images, I think, that he has. So you may find them in other comics if you look hard enough that are his, which is quite interesting. Um, what we have here in the first panel is the Vita Gloriosa. And that is actually called a Glorious Life, which um, is something that Hillary came up with. I think it's kind of as a play on the band name. And it's... Um, I guess this ship is also um, the human's last best hope for survival. So the idea was that the last of humanity is leaving um, Earth. They know they're the last lot um, and they know they're never going back to Earth. And so this is supposed to be a colony ship. And the idea is that they'll be on it for a long time until they come across another planet. So it's actually, the, the drawing of it is based on the ship called Valley Forge. And it's from the song, it's, sorry, it's not from the song. It's from the film Silent Running. Um, and actually that film has nothing to do with Silent Running Engaged as the song. So um, it's a bit of an odd one. But it was, um, I think the fact that the song was called Silent Running Engaged inspired um, the ship to, be, to look like the Valley Forge from uh, that that film. Uh, if you haven't watched that film, I really suggest going and watching it. It's not an awful lot happens in it, but it's 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 one of the ones with the feels. It's a sci-fi with feels. I mean, like three people in it and a lot of trees. It's great. It's kind of good. So as we go on, um, I didn't actually want a representation of myself in the comic book. Um, that was Hillary's idea. I wanted the dog. <laughs> I was way more interested in having the dog in it than uh, than actually anything that looked like me, but that was just the way the story worked. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the fourth panel here is actually what we used as the album cover, and, and it wasn't drawn specifically. There we go. It wasn't drawn for the album cover, but I ended up using it because I thought it was just awesome. Um, and it's obviously used a lot in the music video for this particular song. Uh, the panel at the bottom here with the little hands and uh, the spaceship, that actually changed a number of times over the, the time of the comic being drawn because it wasn't... Uh, Nigel was just not happy with the stuff that he did. So this there is versions of this page with that, um, that bottom panel with the hands and the spaceship. Um, actually being something completely different, which is which is quite nice, which is quite nice. 
So this one, this character is really our main character of the whole comic book. Although she doesn't last very long, as is the same with every single character. Um, I don't really know who the dude is down the bottom, but um, this is Dr. Veronica, and she's named after uh, Saint Veronica, which is a Billy Talent song. Um, and it's kind of in in the Billy Talent song. It's about a woman who's either tried to kill herself or is about to try and kill herself, and they really struggle to tell her that life is worth living. And this is kind of the story that of of her after she comes out of the hospital or whatever it was she was and this is where she ends up being so she becomes very she's always dealt with mental health issues and things like that and she's just got to the end of her rope where she doesn't even like humanity after everything that we've done and she comes up with the brainwave to kill everybody <clears throat> um and that kind of fitted in my mind to the dr veronica in a billy talent song Oh, sorry, Saint Veronica in the Billy Talent song. However, now thinking about it, I think if Greta Thunberg was to grow up, um, this could well be the story of her in her later life. I think that she would make a really awesome supervillain. And uh, this could well be her story. <laughs> I quite like that. I almost say it's something that I've only thought about recently, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. On my hand, to think that a little girl with pigtails decides to just destroy everybody. It's current. Okay, so this song is one of my favorites. It's always been a favorite of mine, and I really spent a lot of time trying to work out how it was going to sound. Um, and it needed to be a super villain song, essentially. So I've kind of drawn a line between the guys from the Columbine High School. And uh, that Andrus Bevic fella and the James Holmes guy, and they're very just obviously very much part of um, uh, the storyline. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. There's not a lot can be said about this one. It's very obvious where the part what what we're covering in this. And I don't um yeah. And I guess the idea of the computer virus, the computer knowing that the virus is is uh, mutating is. An interesting factor because I which I think Hillary put in and I was like how does it know how does it know oh I don't know um yeah I, I don't think this needs an awful lot of explanation I mean if you want to ask a question on something you're most welcome to there we go okay so this one is where when you start working with other people and there's a collaboration going on sometimes those people just say a thing that is so left field that you just you don't really understand where they got it from but it actually just scares you and when i read the script for this page um the last three bars panels here on the right um just were really terrifying when i first read them because it was quite scary because everyone's just having a reasonably decent time. And then you've got these last two panels. And it gets um, pretty dark pretty fast. So well done, Hillary, for putting that right in. Uh, it was good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of at a UN kind of affair here. Um, yeah, again, perhaps not all that much explanation. I w like Dave did ask about to go into the characters, but there's obviously no recurring characters, and everybody dies off pretty much in every page. We don't we don't really go back to any of them, even the ones who made it onto the ship in the first um, page. Don't we don't see them again really in the in the later pages. Um, so this is also the Japanese song, and uh, that's probably about all I can say about that. Mm. I'm guessing that there are people there, although I can't see you and I can't see any comments that you guys are making. I think Facebook has been a bit funny on me again. Um, I know that some people have joined and normally it tells me all the guys that have joined, but I can't see anybody's name. Uh, I don't know what's, what, what the crack is on that. Anyway, so we're back here on the ship. And it's pretty obvious that we're that um, Nigel and there was a conversation about how the ship members should look. And we've obviously gone for a Star Trek look. You know, there's an obvious the color scheme that people will recognize very easily. 
and I guess it's just something that um, we can come back to as stories go on and on like you've got engineers and captains and all that kind of stuff the, the, the interesting thing in this comic page for me is this last panel at the bottom where um, the wolf's head's coming out of the, the computer screen and it's saying that uh, you're going to die, Captain, you're all going to die. I'm going to eat you all with tiny pastry forks. Um, that was definitely a Hilary Robinson adaptation and I didn't think it was um i originally did not think that it was it was suitable it was a bit cheesy in my mind however i have to say it's the one thing if someone's going to mention a lyric or a word from the comic book well it's not in the lyric but if if anybody mentions a words or or text from the comic book it's always this one and how much they enjoyed the funny just adaptation in when perhaps people weren't expecting it and so it's worked out really well. Um, so I'm glad I didn't beat over that. So well done, Hillary. Um, moving on to this one. Now, the problem that we had between this last one and this one, because these were going to be music videos, they were actually way too similar. They had too many of the same characters. The backgrounds were kind of the same. And it made it really difficult to make a music video out of the second half because we'd already basically seen everything. However, um, John Hull worked very hard to bring in a lot of the characters from the previous pages and actually do something different, which worked really, really well. Um, I have to say that this page has the only image that I thought up myself, and that was the, the single eye at the bottom. I really I knew which song was going to go on top of this. Um, I knew that I really wanted that eye to be part of the stage presentation because it's quite a fo focal point. Um, so apart from everything else, <laughs> image-wise, I didn't really have much say in what was drawn. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what else to tell you on this. Um, this is uh, the, the earth exploding in the background here is also one of um, Nigel's more stock images. You may well see that somewhere else as well. Uh, I guess the dog is the one that keeps on coming back. Yeah, who doesn't love a dog? Uh, the dog is actually based off my mum's whippet, uh, G. Uh, yeah, because we love, we love G. Oh, we love G. Great dog. Uh, okay, so this is our last pin. Uh, so I actually got asked at my last show for the first time ever why this planet, I think it was Jupiter, was um, chosen specifically for this. For this. I've never been asked why we, we chose certain um, installations before, so um, constellations, installations. It's, it's a solar, it's a galactic installation. Uh, oh, so the idea behind this spe specific planet being chosen was because it was the planet furthest away from, the, from Earth that would give the captain time to go crazy, um, but also had the right density to actually crash a, pl uh, a spaceship into. A spaceship of this size into that would have the image effect of the second pain. <laughs> that's a, I mean, that's a lot, I guess. There's a lot of thought went into that, and it was Nigel's choice on the planet. Um, and this was also a kind of difficult uh, page to do a music video for, mostly because there's not a lot in it. And I think John, again, did a really good job of uh, making it into the bigger lyric video um but there's definitely things that we've learned on this comic that we won't repeat on the second and the major one is that like these pages being the same and these are the ones that we make into music videos that won't happen again on the next um comic the next comic will have a storyline um page so it'll be five pages of storyline that the character goes through and then five pages of daydreaming, which we make the music videos out of, and every one of those will be different. So we won't have um, um, this this issue with this that we had before. Um, so that's it. It's only seven pages long, short and sweet, as it say. Um, and obviously, Nigel Dobbin's no longer with us. So um, 
it's nice that we get to go over his work a bit more. I mean, it's 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 good fun. It was it was good fun doing the whole project, and it's really great working with other people. I mean, I think we're probably going into a time when I will look at having a full band, because working in combination with other people, when you don't have to fight for space, is is really great. So I know I don't know how to script a comic, and I don't know how to draw a comic specifically. So having people who add their own basis on there but are not in the field to have an argument over it or don't need to stamp their their own stamp on, on top of the project. Um, and it's nice and it's so nice. So at the moment we are, what are we doing? We are auditioning illustrators. Auditioning. Does one audition an illustrator? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we've asked two illustrators to uh, give back a version of the, the first couple of pages of the comic. Um, the first one has one who is in Indonesia and the other one who is in East London. And at this at this point, the one in Indonesia, I think, is a couple of days away from returning something. <laughs> and the one in East London hasn't replied to my email. So but we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, I've probably kept you all way too long this week. So just remember a couple of things that we will have the Death and Gloria end of year uh, end of year celebration, which will be on the fourteenth of December in East London. Uh, the ticket includes a T-shirt, and there'll be somebody supporting, and then basically a couple of sets from me. I will probably do the new album in full. The comic and illustrations will not be ready by December, but the first demos will be. So. I hope to have that done by the 14th. So we will probably do the second album first. And it's only five songs, so it's only a short set. And then have a break. And then do the second, the first album, which you all know. Because you're all fans of Death and Gloria. Um, and we will have an anime karaoke. And we will just stay up and be, and be merry until we're not merry any longer. And the last thing I need to do is thank the anonymous contributor to the album fund last week. I don't know who you are, but you did put in £10, and that does take us up to the total of uh, £250, which I think is awesome for, for someone who hasn't really even started a crowdfunder. Um, all that money does not get touched. I mean, it's in that pool. You can see it going up each week, and it will be used on album creation when we get to that point. Uh, the anonymous person didn't leave their name, but they did ask if I'd got lights working. <laughs> because last week, the whole thing was just me trying to fiddle with some lights. So the answer is, technically, no, I have not got stuff to work. However, I was crying into my milk this morning while trying to have breakfast and work out why I could not get anything to work. And I moved from a program on a PC to my Mac. However, my Mac wouldn't read with the, with my DMX, my light interface, the piece of block of uh, unit that feeds the information to the lights. And then while I was off trying to find this, this connecting cable, basically, I saw on the internet one of these. And I thought, I've actually got one. I have to just go find it, right? So I went and found this in my spare box down in the garage. And it, that's where... And this, this fixed the problem. So while the lights currently don't work, this has brought me one step closer. One step closer to the edge. Woo! Uh, and that's about it. Um, next week, we will be cover. We will be um, showcasing. No, I don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing. But next week, I'll be launching the new web store. It will have new ornaments, new pictures, pictures and frames, the t-shirts will be done properly, everything will be up for sale and ready for Christmas. And even if you guys don't actually buy a thing, it'd be really nice if you like a thing to just pass it on. So I'll be launching that next Wednesday. Um, so until then, I hope that you about the comic. Uh, uh, well, no, I'm not, not that sorry. I'm not that sorry. Right, and we will see you all next week at 7 o'clock on the Wednesday. All right, bye-bye. Oh, that wasn't the outro. <laughs>